Welcome to your camper. This will be your home while you're traveling. This tour will familiarize you with the camper so you know a bit more about it and where to find everything. It may seem like a lot to take in at first, but don't worry, you'll be a pro within a day. Let's take a look. This camper is an automatic Mercedes Sprinter. It has either a keyless start ignition or a standard key start ignition. If keyless, the gear shift is on the steering wheel and the handbrake is either a push button or push down. To start the engine, put your foot on the brake and press the start button. If the camper has a key start ignition, put the gear in park or neutral and turn the key until all dash lights appear. When the glow light goes off, put your foot on the brake, turn the key further and start the engine. This camper features a reversing camera, which will show on the dash screen when in reverse. Make sure someone is guiding you when reversing and parking. Chances are this camper is bigger than you're used to driving. There are some handy stickers on the windscreen to remind you of the camper height, length and maximum speed allowed when driving. We don't recommend driving at dusk or night time, so be sure to arrive at your overnight destination before then. If the camper is fitted with the THL road trip dash, you can connect your smartphone to it via Bluetooth and access phone calls and music. This screen also features GPS navigation to help you travel around with ease. Under the passenger side footwell are the tools and jack to change the tire. In some campers, the jack may be under the driver's seat. Beside this area on the side wall is the lever to release the bonnet. In the passenger side door pocket is the first aid kit. We hope you won't need it, but it is there just in case. If you do open it, you have purchased and can pay for it when you return to the branch. The handy quick reference guide is also in this door pocket. Moving outside, here is the LPG bottle compartment. This supplies gas to the interior stove and hot water system. Make sure the gas bottle is turned off when it's not being used and before driving. We filled the LPG bottle up for you and you'll need to refill it before returning, unless you've purchased the express return pack or pre-purchase gas option. Next to it are the shut-off valves. Here is the power inlet to plug into 240 volt power at a campsite. This is needed to use the microwave and internal power points. It also supplies power to the reverse cycle air conditioning in Australian campers. Plugging into power will charge the 12 volt house battery. Next is the compartment where you can access the toilet cassette to empty it into an authorized dump station. Don't worry, it's very quick and easy to do. Below is the wastewater outlet. The hose to empty the tank is in the camper's storage locker. This is the water heater system, and next to that is access to the storage locker. Around on the passenger side is the other access point to the storage locker. In here is the 15 amp power lead, freshwater hose, wastewater hose, and other general equipment you may need during your trip. Next to the locker is the inlet for the fresh water tank. We have filled the tank for you, ready to go. Above the windows is your shade awning. The pole to set this up is inside the camper. The fuel inlet is beside the passenger door. To access it, the passenger door must be open. This camper takes diesel fuel. We filled the tank up for you and you'll need to refill it before returning unless you have purchased the express return pack or pre-purchase fuel option. Before moving inside, pull out the step for easy access. There is a screen door that can be detached from the main entry door. Behind the driver's cab are seats for the other four passengers. Seat belts must be worn at all times when driving. The forward-facing seats are where child seats or booster seats can be fitted. In Australia, booster seats can also be fitted on the rear-facing seats. Use this area for dining by setting up the table or convert it to a bed at night. At the base of the seats is the red 12-volt isolation switch. 
This needs to be on at all times to use the 12 volt appliances such as fridge, house lights, water pump, range hood, toilet flush, media player and house USB ports. These USB ports are located next to the isolation switch. Since they are powered by the 12 volt house battery, they will work when you are not plugged into 240 volt mains power. Above this area is the 12 volt control panel. Turn these switches on only when you need them. If you have a fridge switch, leave that on at all times. The house battery is separate to the camper engine battery, so if the house battery is getting low, don't worry, the camper will still be able to start. In New Zealand, there is a diesel heater dial here. Australian campers don't have this, as they feature a 240 volt reverse cycle air conditioner instead. The kitchen area includes a fridge, gas stove, grill, sink and microwave. Below the kitchen bench in the drawers are utensils, cutlery, plates, cups, bowls and coffee mugs, along with pots, pans and other kitchen equipment. In the tall drawer to the left is the bin and electrical appliances. To use these appliances as well as the microwave and in Australia the reverse cycle air conditioning, you must be plugged into 240 volt power. There is storage in the overhead cupboards as well as under the seats. Make sure the drawers and cupboards are locked before driving. Above the kitchen is the entertainment unit. This is a media player only and doesn't have access to television signal, but it's great for watching DVDs or movies from a USB. Here is the bathroom. Don't forget to flick on the water pump and toilet flush switches before using the facilities. In some campers, the toilet switch will be labelled spare. When parked up, set up the rear dining table. At night, this area converts to a double bed. The third double bed is a permanent bed in the loft above the driver's cab. Use the ladder provided to access this bed. There are curtains all the way around for your privacy. To finish, we'd like to share some helpful tips for your trip. We recommend you plug into 240 volt power on your first night and then every two or so days for the house battery to fully charge. The speed of the 12 volt battery drainage will depend on the climate and how often it is used. A full charge takes between 14 to 16 hours and needs to be done at a campground. The water gauge in the camper doesn't always give an accurate read of how full the tanks are. Top up the fresh water and empty the wastewater every one to two days. Empty the toilet cassette every one to two days or as needed. The wastewater tank and toilet cassette must be emptied at an authorised dump station. If you are staying at a holiday park, you will have access to one there. Otherwise, use the THL road trip app to search for the closest one. Top up and empty at every opportunity and you won't have to worry about a thing. Lastly, always remember, have your keys with you when you are outside the camper. We want to make sure you're completely comfortable before you leave the branch. Please don't be shy in asking your branch host any questions and let them know if anything doesn't seem right with your camper. Once on the road, remember that there's a bunch of helpful videos on your THL road trip app and if stuck, you can call our on-road care team 24-7. On behalf of all the crew at THL, have an incredible adventure.